Jackie Gleason. The Honeymooners. With the stars Art Carney. Audrey Meadows. And Joyce Randolph. that you looked a little strange, that's all. I didn't know it was you at first. What'd you expect to come out of the sewer? The man in a gray flannel suit? <laughs> Boy, that outfit is certainly a doozy. Well, oh, oh, come on, let's eat our lunch. I ain't got no lunch. My lunch is back at Brooklyn. What'd you forget to bring it? No, I didn't forget to bring it. <laughs> I dropped it on the job here. Uh, if I'm any judge of currents, it's back in Brooklyn right now. <laughs> don't worry about it, pal. You can eat my lunch. I'm not hungry anyway. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you offer me your lunch, it's either one or two things. Alice made you tuna fish sandwiches, or else you want to borrow money from me. <laughs> Ham, you want to borrow money. <laughs> Just so happens, Norton, that I happen to have one of the greatest ideas I've ever had in my life. Yeah? You know that costume party they're running tomorrow night down at the Raccoon's Lodge? Yeah. I know how to win the very first prize, which is $50. So do I. How? I have the best costume. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, that's the answer, but only we know that. Take those guys. They don't have the head for it down at the lodge. Look what happens every year they run a costume party. What does Cassidy show up in? Cuts down his wife's dress and goes as tugboat and. <laughs> Look at Riley. Throws a white sheet over his head and says he's Julius Caesar. Wait a minute. I was talking to Riley a little while ago. This year he's going to make a change, he said. This year he's going to throw a sheet over him and go as Mark Anthony. <laughs> Well, that ain't gonna win him the prize either. No. My way is the only way. What way is that? Well, to start off with, you lend me $10. I go down to a real costuming house and get a professional costume. That means that the other guys ain't got a chance. How can they win with me running around in a professional costume and them wearing those homemade things? And get this, I invest $10. I win 50, which gives me a $40 profit. Well. You are a genius. Really think so, Norton? I know so. Because you think like me. <laughs> That's why you can't get the $10 from me. Because we're both geniuses and we think alike. What are you talking about? I'll tell you. Just a minute. Hey, that Florida, throw up that package I got down there, will you? Know what's in this here package? A costume I rented this morning for the party tomorrow night. <laughs> you rented a costume? Certainly I rented a costume. I'm gonna win the $50 prize. I tell you we both think alike. <laughs> Norton, you are a snake. Of all the low-down conniving tricks to steal my idea. <laughs> what do you mean, steal your idea? It was an original idea. We both got the original idea at the same time. Don't give me that. You never had an original idea in your life. Wait a minute, I take that back. You did have one original idea. Your idea for that kid's cereal. Pablum on pizza. <laughs> just don't laugh, don't laugh. It's catching on. It's catching on, huh? Well, I just want you to know what you just did. You just declared total war. Not only did you steal my idea, but to use the $10 that I was gonna use to put my idea into operation. <laughs> just remember, Norton, this is total war. All right, now, wait a minute, just simmer down. Just, 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 just simmer down. Look at the facts. Look at the facts. I got this here costume this morning. You told me about your idea a couple of minutes ago. How did I steal your idea? How I don't know I how you did it, idea? but you did it. I had this idea more than a week ago. Well, you didn't tell me about it. How could I steal your idea? Huh? How, huh? I don't know what you did, and it's not going to do you any good, Norton. Just remember that. It'll do you no good. All right. And another thing. I'm winning, pal. I'm winning, no matter what you do. That's the way you feel about it? Nothing left to say, is it? 
Just one more thing, Norton. From here on in, we are deadly enemies. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. If you see me coming down the street, get on the other side. When you come down the street, there ain't no other side. <laughs> I'm going to come right to the point. I don't want any beefs, no arguments. I want you to be reasonable, and I'll be reasonable. This is my request. I want ten dollars. <laughs> All right, Ralph. Whenever you come in here with this approach, I know you're about to start in again on another one of your crazy harebrained schemes. This is no crazy harebrained scheme. You know that the costume party is tomorrow at the lodge. I know how to win the $50 prize. All I need is the $10 to get my costume. I got it all picked out. I'm going as King Henry the Eighth. Nothing doing, Ralph. I can't spare the $10. All right. I said I'd be reasonable, and I will be. If you can't give me 10, I'll take five. For $5, I can go as Billy the Kid. <laughs> I tell you what I will do. I'll give you a tin can. You can go as Billy the Goat. <laughs> Bang, zoom. Listen to me, Ralph. I don't want to hear any more nonsense about renting a costume. I told you over a week ago to start making your own. Now, why don't you use some originality? Show some ingenuity. Why don't you use your brain? Because I want to win first prize, that's why. <laughs> well, you can work it out any way you want, Ralph. All I know is you're not getting the $10. And I gotta hurry up and get dinner ready, because the Nortons are gonna be here any minute. What are the Nortons coming down here for? I invited them for dinner. Oh, is that so? Well, for your information, the Nortons aren't setting foot in this house. Ralph, I had to invite them for dinner. Don't you realize we've had dinner at their house three nights this week already? <laughs> That's their hard luck. <laughs> I don't mind Trixie eating here, but Norton, not a moss does he get. Bonjour, everybody. Happy Chow Boy to you. <laughs> How do you like it, Alice? I just thought I'd slip it on and uh, see how it felt. Get the feel of it, you know. Oh, Ed, you look wonderful. But who are you supposed to be? I am Pierre Francois de la Briofsky. Well, who is he? Who is he? You never heard of him? No. Oh, he's been a childhood hero and idol of mine since I was a kid. Well, what was he? A king or something? What are you, are you kidding? A king or something? Oh, Pierre Francois de la Brioski was a great man. He designed and built the sewers of Paris. Well, it certainly is quite a costume, isn't it, Ralph? <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Methinks I detect the presence of a green eyed monster. You don't detect nothing. I'm not jealous of you, Norton. Just remember. Any dope with ten dollars can rent a costume. And on top of it, you stole the idea from me. Peasant? In the words of the immortal Pierre Francois de Brioski, La plume est de bon, si c'est bon, les serons les confitis. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means wait till tomorrow night and see who the judges pick as winner at the costume ball. You don't frighten me, pal. You think you're gonna win that ball? <laughs> that gives me a laugh. That gives me a laugh. I'm the one that's gonna win it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you're going to win, Pat. Up to now, I wasn't interested in going into the contest. Not at all, Pat. But just to teach you a lesson, once and for all, I am going into the contest with my own original costume that I will make up myself. It's not because I want to win the $50. It's not because I want to show off my talents, how good I am at originating things, but only to teach you a lesson. Now, what have you got to say to that? Any words to the immortal Pierre Francois de Labrovsky? Le plus. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> right now. Dinner's almost ready. Ed, where's Trix? She's upstairs. She's come down a little while. They can sit down and eat first. I'll wait. <laughs> won't hurt me to wait a couple of hours to eat. No, it won't hurt you, but it'll be tough on the farmers. <laughs> come on, Ed. You sit down. I want to take a look at the roast. Making my costume, that's what I'm doing. With the icebox door? Yes, with the icebox door. Don't get upset. I'll put it back on tomorrow. But, Ralph, by tomorrow, all the food that's in there will be spoiled. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Just invite him down. He'll eat it. What kind of a costume can he be making? I don't know, but if he took the whole icebox, I'd say he was going as a junk man. <laughs> I need knobs. You said use your imagination. Well, my imagination says I need knobs. Well, that's just great, Ralph. Now, supposing I need something in that drawer, how am I going to get it open? There's nothing that you'll want that's in that drawer that can't wait till tomorrow. Where's the flashlight? It's in with the things that can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Ralph, come on, come on. Will you tell me what kind of a costume are you making anyway? I knew you were going to ask that question. I knew you were going to ask that question, but you'll get no answer from me. You stole one idea from me. You're not stealing this one. Just remember that, pal. It's in the thing that can wait till tomorrow, huh? Who I All right. Oh, right. doing anyway tell you what I'm doing I'm making a costume that's gonna make a fool of you pal that's gonna look like a piece of French cheesecloth when I'm finished and you are gonna look even sillier than that sissy hero of yours that Frioski or whatever his name is oh, wait. just a minute you're talking about a great man a great man who designed and built the sewers of Paris sure he built the sewers of Paris Anybody that dresses like that's got to have a place to hide. <laughs> you can go so far, Rob. I'm not taking any more of this. I don't care if you insult me. You can call me anything you like. But when you insult Pierre Francois de Lebrowski, you insult the honor of France. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel. Do you have any seconds? I got some seconds. I got two seconds. And you better use them to get out. Get out!
come in now. No, you can't. I haven't got the whole costume on yet, and I don't want to see it until I get it all on. I want you to get the full effect of it. I hope you know it's getting late, Ralph. I'd like to get in there and wash up. Well, wash up in a kitchen sink. I can't. You're using the faucet as part of your costume. <laughs> and I can't play the radio because you're using the tubes. I can't even open the window because you've got the sash cord. Get ready. I'm coming out. <laughs> faces on them down there when I walk in with this. <laughs> you gotta admit it, Alice. You gotta admit it. When the chips are down, I'm ready to go. The wheels are turning up here at all times. Well, what do you think? I think you're nuts. <laughs> None of your funny stuff, Alice. What do you think of the costume? Well, I gotta admit, it certainly is original, Ralph. <laughs> There's one question I'd like to ask you. You're losing it already. Let me have that. That's my denaturizer. <laughs> While we're on the subject, what are you supposed to be? What am I supposed to be? The man from space. Oh, is that what a man from space looks like? What's the matter? Aren't you up on current events? Don't you read the papers? Don't you read comic books? That's the trouble with you. You don't know the latest developments. I don't know the latest developments. Who is it that lets your pants out every other day? <laughs> oh, you're a riot, Alice. A regular riot. Regardless of what you say, this is going to win the first prize. They'll know what I am down there. Ralph, you asked me what I thought of your costume, so I told you. I did not recognize you as a man from space, and no matter what you think, the judges are not going to recognize it either. It's just a matter of time, Alice, that's all. We'll be there in an hour or so, and we'll find out. Well, I don't care about the $50. I just want to teach Norton a lesson. Don't be too confident, Ralph. Norton looked pretty cute in that outfit of his. Pretty cute? <laughs> There's a laugh. Oh, yeah. oh! <laughs> Boy, it's you, Ralph. Boy, you had to scare there for a minute. I, I, I thought we were being invaded. <laughs> invaded? Did you hear that, Alice? It didn't take him long to find out that I'm the man from space. Space? Who said anything about space? I thought we were being invaded by Sherman tanks. <laughs> well, this is what I made from the stuff around the house. Yeah. What's your opinion? Well, frankly, I uh, liked it better when it was furniture. <laughs> well, no matter what you think, I'm walking off with the prize. Uh -huh. This will make a fool out of you, and your costume alongside of this is going to look like a piece of French cheesecloth. Uh -huh. And it's going to make you look sillier than that French hero of yours. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I'd rather not hear you mention that Brioski's name anymore today. Why not? I thought he was your idol, the man who built the sewers. Well, I uh, did a little reading up on him uh, today. He didn't build the sewers. He condemned them. <laughs> that must have came as a terrible blow to you. <laughs> oh, well, Seth Slug Larry. <laughs> <laughs> What have we here? Look who strolled into the lounge. <laughs> and what's your name, little girl, and how old are you? <laughs> My name is Alice, and I'm 12, going on 12 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Ralph? How do you like it? Where's the other half of that costume? How <laughs> <laughs> is Ralph? I'm supposed to be a 12-year-old girl. Your knees are showing. 
Of course my knees are showing. A 12-year-old girl's knees are supposed to show. Not any 12-year-old girl that's married to me. <laughs> you walk into that party, everybody will be looking at your knees. All right, Ralph, I'll fool them. I'll walk in backwards. <laughs> in, in, in. I got some awful news. Oh, so mad I could cry. Simmer down. What do you mean, cry? Cry it never solved anything. Remember the old saying, laugh in the world, laughs with you, crying to cry alone? What's the bad news? What? Your foreman called. There's an emergency up at the 225th Street sewer, and he wants you to go up there right away. But I don't want to work tonight. He said if you don't go, you'll lose your job. Oh, that's a shame, Ed. Yeah, what are you going to do, Ed? Well, what can you do at a time like this? Duty calls? You got to answer the call to duty, that's all. Just one of those days for me, I guess. First of all, I find out that my... My hero, my childhood idol, Pierre-Francois de la Brioski, is a phony. I waste 50 cents on some new snuff today. Now I gotta go to work. La plus musique en les chouchis. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Costume contest? Yes, sir. Right, Look, right. Ralph, will you stop bothering us? It isn't me. I'm in no hurry. It's just the rest of them. They're all impatient. Uh -huh. I'll go in and tell them to keep their shirts on. <laughs> Say, did you uh, happen to get a load of Cassidy's costume? Got his uh, wife's dress on again, tugboat mm. Annie, same as last year. <laughs> Riley's got the sheet again, yeah. Julius Caesar. <laughs> did you get a good look at my outfit? Yeah. Well, all right, Ralph. I'm ready. Bring them in now. Bring yeah. them in. Let's go. All right, everybody. They're going to judge oh. the contest. Oh, come on, Greg. Turn it on, everybody. Come on. Come on. Why not? Now, friends, we've narrowed the contest down to two people. But before we make our final choice, we want to see them again. Now, first, we have Ralph Crandon. Oh. I had no idea. We chose Crandon for his wonderful impersonation of a pinball machine. <laughs> pinball machine? Well, sure, that's what you're supposed to be, isn't it? Oh, certainly. <laughs> and next, we have Pete Woodruff. Oh. We chose Woodruff for his costume depicting a playboy of the Roaring Twenties. <laughs> a nice rented costume you have there, Pete. It's all rented. Well, we have decided who the winner is. The winner is... <laughs> well, who are you? Me, not Norton. Am I too late for the East? Well, you may be too late for the East, Norton, but you're not too late to win the first prize. Fifty dollars for the man from space. <laughs> 